and welcome to the 24th episode of Tissues of the Day. I'm your host, David, and I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Robert. And today's episode is about fitness. We are joined today by our special guest, Ryan Steele. Welcome, Ryan. Thank Yay. you. Oh, already please. got the guns out. Oh, please. You know, yeah. I had to wear a very, very tight shirt for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're all going to put our money where our mouth is. Turns out I'm broke. I don't know how Robert's oh. feeling. <laughs> well, I put my mouth where I get my money. So, oh, okay. Oh. Oh. Ew. This is disgusting. <laughs> I just like. Oh, really, Ryan? <laughs> this coming from. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like Brings looking down the wallets. Just yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ryan is... Nobody even has cash anymore in their wallet, David. <laughs> Speak for I yourself. Do. That's where I hide my rent. Oh. <laughs> oh, shit. I've said too much. This is now public information. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, sure. Ryan is currently working on a TV pilot and podcast. You can follow him at Ryan and Amy Show on Instagram. Are you on Twitter as well? Or no? Not really, no. No. And TikTok. Uh, he yes. works with. He works with the with a partner who will not be named on this podcast. <laughs> oh, the shade of it all. Her name is Amy, and that, she's amazing. Okay, yeah. mm. it was Ryan's request not to speak too highly of her. So shut up. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? Now Ryan is your opportunity to get back at Amy because she has slapped you more times than I've witnessed her slap anyone. Like the number of videos I've seen her like launch you across the room from a slap. It's yeah. Amazing. We love it. We love a nice slap. That's definitely a good uh, slap. It's, and we sometimes we're good. Like we want to, we want to make it look real. So she does sometimes make contact. Ooh. Mm. Mm-hmm. But some of my favorites, admittedly, are the ones where it's like completely separate cuts and she like slaps the air and then yeah. you go flying into yeah. another shot. <laughs> Ryan, yeah. do you edit a lot of your sketches or do you have an editor as well? All of them. Yeah. That's so funny. I, I like yeah, your but, editing but, style. I will say that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, it's I've been doing it forever and it's great because Amy's very much a part of it. So either if she's with me or even if she's at home, I'll just like keep sending her stuff and she'll be like, what, what if we change this and this and what if make this a little tighter? And then, um, yeah, that's one thing. It's like last year I started my like TV show rating series, which went on for like 40 weeks or whatever, but I edited that by myself every week. And that's when I really learned like the quick kind of edit, you know, like where you want to jump into the next word, like right as it's being said, just like go, 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 go. So that's kind of something that's been new to me over the last, um, year, which has been great though for like, TikToks and Instagram because, you know, you just want to be short form. We used to have like three and a half, four and a half minute videos. And now we're like 30 seconds, you know, 52 seconds, which is working out to be better. Yeah. Five years. We're going to have five second long videos. Like we I have know. such short attention spans. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So have you ever like taken a video editing course, David? Or sorry, Brian? In any no, way? no. It was just all self-taught. I just, uh, yeah, lots of YouTube tutorials and a lot of trial and error and like, yeah, back in the day when it was like I had I used Adobe and I had a PC and oh, my God, there'd be one times where like I'd be editing something for a day and a half and then the whole thing would just crash and I would lose it all. And I'd be like, no. Yeah. And then but that's just part of the process. And now it's like I can do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> so cool. Wow. Cool. It is really fun, like especially vlog content like you're talking about or I guess talking head content where you mm-hmm. are cutting it so tight and like the cuts become jokes in themselves. It's really Definitely. hard to do that in sketch because you're trying to like make it feel real in some ways, yeah. like when the sketch is happening. So like yeah. too many abrupt edits. I get you. No. It's fun. Yeah, like, Let's just talk. This you, is an editing podcast now. Sorry, exactly. Robert. Exactly. <laughs> you got me going now. <laughs> um, so to kick off the show and to get people an idea of what Ryan is like. We do our rapid fire questions. Um, The goal is to answer as quickly as you can, yes or no, either or, and yeah, we'll just get to know you a little bit better. Are you ready, Ryan? I was born ready. How about you, Robert? (laughs) I'm ready. Okay, so Ryan, when are you most likely to be honest? Uh, All the time. Do you prefer sweet or savory? Uh, sweet. What is the last thing you ate? Uh, my breakfast, which was, oh, a lot of eggs and a a shake and bacon. No, turkey bacon. Are you a driver or a passenger? Oh, funny. 
I was a driver, but now I'm a passenger. Mm. Mm. Uh, what do you wish you could do more of? Uh, spend time on my comedy. Do you prefer nights in or nights out? Oh, nights in. What's one of your first thoughts on waking up? Uh, what do I have to do today? <laughs> in the bedroom, do you prefer more time uptown or downtown? <laughs> uh, I don't really know. Uh, like, is that that's a top or bottom question? No, no, it's literally just like what like portion of the body you spend more time Above the neck, on. below the neck. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like downtown a lot, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, cats or dogs? Oh, another one that changed. Used to be cats, but now dogs. Mm. What keeps you up at night? Oh, God. D -d -uh, like shows. Oh, I have to watch Big Brother and Love Island and John Oliver and, <laughs> you know, like, oh, and Ted Lasso came back. Oh, I guess I have to watch that. And then suddenly it's like, you know, 3.30 and you're like, yes. Shout out to Ted Lasso. Uh, so good. So it's, good. It's an incredible show. I think we have to talk oh. about it as soon as we're done with this segment. Um, have you cleaned your belly button today? No. What's a self-care thing, your top self-care thing you do? Um, I, I guess every night before I go to bed, I have this, when I got my tattoo removed, like over the last couple of years, and it, it scabs when you get it done. So this is a long answer. And they, I had to get this really intense cream to help uh, it heal. And then now it's healed and I don't know, I get any more removal. So I use that cream to put under my eyes every night before I go to bed. But it's a really kind of like greasy, and then when it, sometimes it makes marks on my pillowcases, and it looks gross. But it's worth it. Wow. Well, I'm satisfied. How about you, Robert? <laughs> I'm satisfied. <laughs> uh, so, what did we pick up from Ryan this time around with these questions? Um, you know what? For me, because like I, I know Ryan to a degree, especially like performing in the same venues as him and seeing him as a performer in that. But what I gathered from this that I didn't know about Ryan is I get you're more of a softy and kind of like, you know, like a snuggler cozy type than I thought you were. Oh, yeah, it's pretty true. And like even, yeah, cause that was last weekend. I think I had a couple nights where I went out with friends because like everyone's seen each other again and all that. And I just I told my friends like I just needed three nights in a row in my apartment by myself. And I wasn't like I did wasn't drinking. I was just like, I just need three nights just to like light candles and eat a healthy meal, watch some good shows, have a good sleep. You know what I mean? I just needed to like, yeah, it was, and that was, that was very fun to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. That is really good. I mean, now that Ted Lasso's David. back, oh. what else is anybody going to do? So have you seen the new right. season? I'm waiting to uh, watch it with a friend in, back in Vancouver. Yes, what did you watch. learn, David? Oh, I learned about Ted Lasso. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> like that show, Robert, have I talked to you about it? No. Okay. So, Ted Lasso is like, it's like sports inspirational comedy, but like on the outside, right? That's sort of its surface. But like underneath, it is like a very like therapeutic show and is really honest about relationships and like healthy masculinity in a weird way. And like mm. is still very funny. And like it explores. So the character of Ted Lasso is played by Jason Sudeikis, who is aggressively positive. But it's not even like um, <laughs> it's not even in a way where he like denies people's feelings. Like he makes a lot of space for other people's feelings, so it's not like toxic positivity. But the show still explores like how that kind of mindset can have some blowback on him because he's like forcing himself to try to like keep it together and like think positive and like be his jolly self. But he can't always do that when life catches up with him because he goes through a divorce through the most of the first season um yeah it's just like it rocked my world i was so <laughs> i love it i can't wait to Very watch the cool. second season i will i love any kind of comedy that can also show some heart within it you know especially mm. when you can play with things such as like the you know the spectrum of masculinity versus yeah. femininity and the like insecurity around that space because like three gay men we we probably face that all the time yeah yeah yeah. And the character, the characters on that show are what sell it for me. Like, just obviously Ted Lasso is amazing and his one-liners, and he's aggressively positive, like you said, David. But then I can't remember her name right now. But the woman who like runs the team, pretty much, her yeah. character arc in the first season was like, I cried. Yeah. And then Keely, like the girl who works for them, and the, the soccer, the players is just like there's so many characters that you fall in love with, and it borderlines cheesy. Yeah. But you kind of like eat it all up, you know? It's just so well done, so funny. 
Oh, don't get me started. Yeah. Mm. Don't even get us started. So, don't uh, watch party, Ted Lasso fandom. It's going to be the next big thing. <laughs> it really is. It's, it's blowing up right now, I think. Yeah. It really, the second season premiere, everyone's in, talking about it. There's, so there's this app that I use called Letterboxd to keep track of like what movies I'm watching. And on the movies Paddington and Paddington 2, people put reviews of Ted Lasso. <laughs> it's <laughs> just like a funny viral phenomenon where they're like, all right, well, Ted Lasso is basically Paddington, so I'm going to put my review here for this show. <laughs> it's hilarious, because I literally just recently went to Paddington Station so I could find Paddington Bear, and I took pictures of him, and then I went to the Paddington store and got Paddington Stationery. I love Paddington. Yes. I have a Paddington jacket. We're going to oh, put wow. up pictures of okay. all of that on the video podcast <laughs> right now mm-hmm. for Robert. <laughs> Um, I want to see that. By the way, uh, if you're listening on the audio version, the video version is on the BitButton YouTube channel, if the listener wants to check that out. So, like I said at the start, today's episode is about fitness, and we are just going to explore those things about being fit. (laughs) Um, People watching video will probably be able to see that Ryan is fit, Robert and I exist. (laughs) <laughs> uh no like i i definitely but ryan fitness. also like out here would be like fit in the english term he's like he's hot oh yeah that's true oh that you're right sure. fit yeah um, oh i mean wow well, yeah. It, yeah 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 it's like it just means attractive uh robert mm-hmm. also values fitness as well i don't mean to poo poo you but uh just to kick us off so for the panel for the zoom how do you navigate the pleasures and pains of exercise. I'm going to throw it to Robert. Yes. Yeah, so, um, exercise to me, I, I don't even really know when I got into it. Like I, I honestly, like I hated it to start with, right? Like I, in high school, I was a theater kid and I hated gym. It was a toxic place. I got bullied. I would avoid it as much as I could. And I got by on the minimum. You do those fitness tests, you know, to basically determine your grade. And I'd always get just a passing grade. I'd be like, if you do 25 pushups, it's like an A and you could pass with a 10, I'd do 10. (laughs) You know, like that's all I would do. Mm -hmm. So fast forward multiple years later, like, I don't even know when I really got into it. But what I did find, it is a huge outlet for me for stress. Like it it just helps me reduce my stress. It's just, I am... And even if it's not for the stress factor, it's like I am a hot, what I call high vibration person. Like I do a lot. I'm moving a lot. I see a lot of people like I just have a lot of energy in me. And so it takes that out. Like I find like sometimes I have a hard time getting into bed because I just have too much in my head or body. So I kind of get that energy out of my body. But there is both pain and pleasure around it. So on one side, it's super, I want to say cathartic, but like just feels good to get that energy out. But on the flip side, I get really stressed sometimes if I'm not doing it. You know, where it's because it becomes habitual and because it's almost like it's expected to be part of your life. If I drop it for a day or two, I'm just like, oh, I really should be doing it. And there's days I'm super stressed and I'll be like, I'm going to cram it in, even though it's going to stress me more to go. And I've been trying to change that mentality around it where it's like, if I do it, it has to be about health. Because if I'm going to do it today and it's going to stress me out further, I just say, fuck it. And I'm going to enjoy a day off. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because like I was even thinking about yeah, there's just like play, pain and pleasure to like all sides of like our relationship with exercise. There's like that anticipation can sometimes be painful. The aftermath can sometimes be painful or equally pleasurable or like it doesn't hurt until two days later, like all of that stuff. Um, Ryan, how about you? Yeah, I'm kind of the same as Robert in the whole like it just keeps me sane um, aspect. Um, I've been exercising since I was like 18, I think I, I've been on for many years now, a routine where I run one day and I go to the gym the next and I kind of keep that going. And I try my best to do that, honestly, seven days a week. Um, and they're both different for me running, running. I never got into it. I just remember being, do you remember being a teenager and being able to eat whatever you wanted all the time? Just like anything. I remember finishing dinner and getting, putting ice cream and chocolate chips and chocolate syrup and blah, 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 blah. And you still had like not an ounce of fat on you. And I thought I'd be able to do this to like my 30s. And then, no, like 19, 20, 21, my metabolism started to slow down right away. And I noticed a little belly and I was like, what is this? So she started hitting the streets of Langley running. And so, so that was that part. And then the gym, yeah, the gym's just always 
as a little gay boy, I've always loved muscles and I wanted, I wanted my own. So I started, my dad had like a bench press and some free weights in our basement. And so I would use those in like my mid late teenage years. And then as soon as I could kind of like when I graduated and could get a gym membership, did that. And then now as like a creepy 43 year old gay man, I love going to the gym just to like look at hot guys. Like there's so <laughs> many and I'm, I hate that. I'm like, I don't want to get caught staring, but I'm like, you know, doing my thing and I'll look over and like, Oh, I'm, I might as <laughs> yeah. get older. I, I've noticed it in the past with gay men <laughs> where like the older gay men will blatantly stare at you. They don't care at all. They will just, you'll walk by and they'll just stare and it's like, okay. And I'm becoming that guy before I used to be trying to be so like, just, oh, I'm not looking at you, like, or like find a mirror reflection where I can secretly look. But oh now I'm just like, if I see someone hot, I'll just go. <laughs> like, oh my God, jaw drop open. Yeah, I'm just like, wow. And even when I'm running, if I run by a hot guy, I'll go, wow, he was hot. Like, I will sometimes verbalize it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't care anymore. I get yeah. that. It, it, it is one of the like outstanding jokes that I love to use and also just like a reference in terms of like gaze in the gym is like, is like the guys who make stri- strong eye contact. It's like just such a thing as like, I'm going to lift something and make strong eye contact <laughs> with you. And it's like, you are this weight. You know? Like, yeah. and it's just... I know. It's intense. Uh, yeah. What? I wonder what, what that's about. The staring thing. Because like, I'm on the younger side. I really try not to stare at people. But like, sometimes you just got to look. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I'm still in that phase of like feeling bashful about it. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess it's just to like avoid awkward interactions. Oh, can I tell you a story? Um, mm-hmm. Yes. So on the beach somewhat recently, uh, I was like with a group of friends sort of over here. And then there's like two friends a little far away, maybe like whatever, 30 feet away. And it's a guy and a girl. And the girl comes over to our group and approaches a girl in our group and says and is like whispering something and like I couldn't really tell what was being said um and then she like runs away and then from our group this girl uh then talks to me and she's like hey so uh there's two people hanging out over there the guy wanted the girl to pass a message to you saying like uh that he thinks you're attractive and like wants to like say hi and I was like whoa okay all right that's what happened uh, and I was high. So I'm like, do I, what do I, what do I do? Uh, and so I think I was a little uninhibited. I was like, all right, I'll go over and I'll talk to them. I walk over. I say, hi, I'm just like, I say, hi, I stay high. Uh, I, I tell them, <laughs> I tell them like, Hey, I'm really high right now. So I can't really like make conversation, but I can give you my phone number to this guy or h- however I phrased it. I was just like, you know, I heard you wanted to chat or something. Um, and I thought it went well. The guy was cute. Uh, but then he never called me. So all of that hullabaloo. Aww. And I'm just like, what happened there? Did I intimidate him? Like, did he just like, could only appreciate from far away and then changed his mind? The male gaze, the gay males. I, d- I just don't know. <laughs> the gay male gaze. Yeah. Uh I mean, I, I feel, I feel like in general, especially like in courtship scenarios, yeah. right. There's always the stare and there's like a, the fine line between the stare. That's just like, I have an interest and I'm like looking at you specifically to just becoming leering and creepy. Yeah. Uh, so, so obviously Ryan has gone into the first and the latter category <laughs> as he's gotten older. <laughs> but, um, I think there's also a thing to the queer community, especially because so much of what our backstory was, is that we had to use code in terms of looks and language sure. and yeah. and behavior to be like hey i have an interest in you also your fit and like you know like let's mm-hmm. like when we see each other again in the change room or something that's where it's going down you know yeah yeah wow okay are we going there have any of us hooked up in a gym i have not i have not i have not not in a well, gym. Moving no. on. <laughs> so my next question for the panel is how important is food in fitness? I'm going to throw it to Ryan. Yeah, that's one area. Oh, actually, no, I think I do pretty good. I'm like a, like for last night, for example, before I went to work, I had to work at seven at the bar. Before work, I had like quinoa, broccoli, chicken, uh, marinara sauce, very healthy, all cooked on my stove. Um, 
so I eat that before work and then I go to work and then for my little break, I have uh, the ch chicken tenders pretty much, but they're chicken, they're, they're small versions of it. So I have fries and <laughs> deep fried chicken. So that was my little splurge at work. Um, but yeah, I eat, I eat a really healthy breakfast and I try to drink a lot of water, but I kind of, and I also like, there's like healthy, bad stuff. Like I'm a Costco guy and there's these delicious, like little Reese peanut butter cups that they sell there, but they're like a dark chocolate kind of keto version of it. And they are like every meal I have, I have to have one after. It's like, I love chocolate a lot. So maybe so is that sweet? keto? Pardon me? How are they keto? What do they do? Oh, I don't know. I should get the bag. I'm not a keto milk? guy. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not like on a keto diet or anything, but they're just oh, okay. delicious. And, uh, um, yeah, I, I just think with food, it's balance. And I know like I've never like in the last long time had like a great six pack, but I just like, also I drink too much. <laughs> But I was like, I'm happy with my balance. You know what I mean? Like, I know if I stopped drinking and didn't have those deep fried chicken at work, I could have even even in my 40s, I probably could have a six pack. But I, it's just it's no, I love I love like eating bad food and drinking too much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to have a six pack, right? That's yeah. absolutely yeah. it. It's just like, again, back to pain and pleasure is like there is a pain to depriving yourself from certain kinds of food. And yeah. I feel like every gym bunny will go like, you know, no pain, no gain. <laughs> and it just becomes this like masochistic thing of like, oh, I'll just eat even food that I hate and I will mm -hmm. have the body and it'll it'll be worth it. And it's like, you need a little more balance, baby. Um, yeah, yeah, what do you think, Robert? Yeah. Um I, I I once heard a line that I loved, which was, um, I don't have six pack abs because I enjoy food. You know, and and I think that is very apt in certain ways. And I've seen like, oh, fuck, there's so many like, I'm sure you've come across them in like social media and ads before of YouTube videos and that where it's like, I eat this whole, you know, like, do you think I ate this pizza or this salad? Oh, and he's God. got ripped body in that. And everyone's like, it's a salad. And he's like, no, he's no. like, I ate this pizza for them. And he's like, well, you want to still look like me? Just sign up to my program. It's four uh. easy payments of four hundred dollars you know yeah. like and it's just like anyways so there's a lot of perception of like you can still eat shitty or whatever you define as shitty and still look like that yeah. and my biggest thing i really really love this is for a year i worked for a like a tech startup that was in food uh it was like an online culinary school and as a result i was exposed to a lot of chefs and food-based people and one of the people that i was exposed to was a nutritionist and the part like i i generally feel like i'm good with my fitness, pretty regular, and know enough to kind of, like, keep at least toned. But I don't know sh enough about food. Like, I, I like I know the general knowledge of, like, you know, don't eat too much bad stuff and you'll be fine. But I didn't know enough about food. And when I went to her, I was like, tell me, like, what is, like, the perfect formula that is, like, specific to my body and my chemistry and that? And she's like, you know what, honestly, she's like, this is the first thing I tell to everyone. She's like, the best way that you should be eating is to have a good relationship with food. She's like, that is the healthiest approach. She's like, if you um, can stick on a diet that is like, you know, keto style, like low carb, high protein, whatever. If you're a person who's like a pescatarian, a vegan, a vegetarian, whatever. She's like, as long as you feel like you have a healthy relationship to it. If you're like, when you approach a plate of food, if you hate what you're about to do because you're scared about eating too much calories or you're scared about eating that ice cream because it's got sugar, which is carbs in it, um, and it just makes you feel pain, then you shouldn't you shouldn't be doing it. And yeah. she's like, that's not a healthy relationship with, with food. She's like, you got one life to live. She's like, you can still be healthy and eat like bad food, quote unquote, so long as it is balanced and you feel like you have a good relationship with that. And I just mm -hmm. really like that idea is that it really did change my approach. It's like, there was days I know, like I deprived myself of something or an experience, like you would go traveling or you'd eat at a particular restaurant. And you're like, oh, I can't eat that because it's, it's too fatty. You know, and I'm just like, no, I, I fucking if I feel guilty or shitty about myself or my relationship to food that I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. 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 yeah that pretty much sums it up because, yeah, it, it becomes less about the habit and really more about ding, 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 ding. David brings it back to therapy. Um, it like, oh. comes back to like self-love and confidence and like body image and all of those things. Um, We're going to do an offshoot yeah. series called David's Couch, and it's just about him giving therapy. To <laughs> it will be very misguided. No, I mean, it yeah. might be okay. It might not be. 
whatever. I have a lot of opinions. But uh, yeah, food and fitness. I, I think I've talked about this before. Like I'm gluten free. Um, I like to eat vegetarian, but more so just as a reminder to myself to have a good intake of fruits and veggies. So I'm getting like balanced mm-hmm. vitamins and minerals and all that. Because like, yeah, I absolutely am the type that will gorge on carbs and chocolate and sweets and all of that stuff and like meat as well we're not gonna make a joke oh Um, oh, come on (laughs) come on you love your meat um but yeah if if it's not balanced it like comes back to that awareness thing that you were talking about robert where like you know if you're really paying attention to how your body feels how your mind feels like you kind of know when you're not eating the way you're supposed to when you're not healthy you just know, mm-hmm. like you feel it. You feel like shit. There's this great oh, yeah. like thing about the human body that like you will have more depressive thoughts, more like pessimistic thoughts when you're unhealthy, very likely. Um, yeah. And vice versa. You'll feel a bit more positive, more uplifted, less stressed when you're feeling healthy. Am I making sense? A lot. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ryan, have, have you do you feel like you're really in touch based off of like your years and fitness? Like being an older gentleman. Oh my god, <laughs> so rude. Do you, do you do you feel um like do you ever get that sensation? I get it myself of like if I keep eating this, it's overindulgence. Like you get there's like that turning point where it's like I don't need more of that chip or yeah. I don't need more of that even like non like bad foods or something like I don't need more of this chicken or whatever, like whatever you might be eating where it's just like my body isn't craving it. Yeah. And you, but if you go past that point, then it's just like, that's where it becomes indulgent or unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think I'm pretty good at like knowing when to close the bag of chips. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I'll be craving it and I'll go and I'll go. And then finally I'm just doing it because I've been doing it now for 10 minutes and it's just like, I can't stop. It's a movement that I was just, I'm a robot. And finally I'll just take out those little clips and I take my clip and I put it on the bag of chips. Yeah. And I'm like, it's done. Clip it. It, it Clip is it. locked. It is locked. I cannot go back in there. And if I go to try it, it's, it's I don't want to open it. So then I've kind of like, tricked myself so you know it's really bad in ryan's house when you go in there not all of the bed ba- not only are all the bags clipped but all the like doors have those little like child protectors on them and he's like god yeah. damn it yeah. <laughs> it's uh, on a time release i feel like yeah. there are some people that do that they might put a time release lock on like their fridge or i feel like what was it chelsea handler was talking about putting a time release lock on her fridge because she was taking edibles through covid and would just like go through the whole fridge just munch everything at all hours and was just like i can't keep doing this (laughs) that's that's why you got to be careful on what you buy because a a big thing for me i think health wise and food wise is that like i can't be that bad because i don't have a lot of bad food like you know even the chips that i have are like on the healthier side you know what i mean like i would never buy doritos or anything like i have like costco kind of like whatever healthy chips and like i said i have the healthy chocolate i just if i'm gonna you know i always try to have at least a healthier version of something so when i do have those moments where i'm like rawr, 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 totally. it's not a, it's not as bad for me what oh. are those cups thing those chocolate cup things are they like called keto cups oh god hold on <gasps> <gasps> product <Yay>. video product <laughs> video <laughs> yay we're gonna do a taste test we're gonna do a like we have to do it all. We have to like get like a review. We have to describe. Back what into it the office like. here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Choxo. Choxo? <laughs> yeah. Choc yeah. yeah. XO. Dark chocolate yeah. almond Those butter cups. Wonderful. Oh, they're almond Keto. butter. Keto. Yeah. See, yeah. keto certified, organic, gluten free, kosher check. What is that, dairy? Kosher is no, no, it's not even. Kosher I think I think blessed. usually kosher just means it's been blessed by like a Jewish priest. <laughs> That's probably what it is. <laughs> um, There's some Jewish priest in that factory blessing every single one of those as they come off the assembly line. <laughs> Do you want to know though my number one complaint about this? Uh oh, individual. Ah, <laughs> yeah. I am trying to be way better with like composting and recycling and even like they don't like I just my parents gave me a Keurig for my coffee so I've been using pods now but it's like really hard to not really hard but I found the compostable ones at uh, London Drugs but you go to Costco there's they're recyclable but that's not good enough I want my pod to be completely compostable that I just throw it in my little brown bag and it you know 
turns into a beautiful plant in about three years. Um, yeah, so that's a lot, a lot of waste in that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had a thought if we, and, and I say this because it's true of out here in England, but also back in Vancouver, if they just had the recycling capacity for soft plastics, there'd be so much less waste. Like I've noticed it's like, it's the wrap around the candy bar. It's those individual cups, you know, like it's the foil, like the plastic foil on top of the like container. Like that's the shit I find I throw out the most is that soft plastic stuff. Yeah. 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 Some buildings have it. Uh, my building at the moment has the soft plastics thing, but it's always a gamble. Like sometimes they say they're recycling the soft plastics, but I don't I actually know. watch them do it. We're Please send me back on your recycling episode. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, We're yes, going to break it. it all down. It's going on the um, list. Going on the list. All right. Last question for the group. I'm going to throw to Robert. What's your favorite exercise? <sighs> Ooh, yeah, this is a tough one. You can name um, a few. No pressure. Sex? Hey! Oh, oh that's nice. Yeah. That would probably be it. Honestly, there are days where I'm like, I've actually considered like sex is going to be my like gym day. <laughs> Why and not? But I, I make, uh, yeah, and I actually make a point of like, I am going to work this guy. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I'm, wow. I'm, so like, I just really want, I'm like, I want to get a sweat on because I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to have time to do anything else today. And, uh, so yeah, I, sometimes I do consider sex probably my favorite. Yeah, no, you could fit. You could fit a good like uh, what do they call it? Whatever, like hovering squats. You could get those. <laughs> hovering <You could> get... <laughs> the thing. God damn it! I'll do it. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, here's thing, a visual example. The thing where people are like doing this, right? Yeah. And then it's just like. All right, don't clip that. <laughs> Everybody who's wa- uh, listening to the podcast, go to the video part if you want to see David do a hovering squat. Uh, also, he's single. Um, <laughs> nice yams. You can pause it and see his legs. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I was literally, um, I'm wearing short shorts. Anyway, uh, making it real enticing for the viewer. The No, but you can also, like, you're going to use the deadlift muscle groups if you're feeling really adventurous. <laughs> mm. Wow. Mm. I mean, out- outside of the bedroom, honestly, mine would be is... <coughs> kind of um i really like anything that i feel like i'm doing compound yeah. uh, exercises so like i like the pulley system style uh like chest press or something like that where it's sort of like i need to work multiple things to kind of get it and it's just like that w- carrying and forcing that weight but every uh, every complementary muscle as you're doing it is probably the most satisfying to me cool mm-hmm. compared to just lifting something really big ass and heavy cool how about you ryan um my favorite exercise, mm-hmm. that's what it is, running, definitely. I love running, a couple of reasons. I love running because I hate it, if that makes sense. Okay. I was talking about it with a buddy recently. I, I, I've i been running for 25 years, and I still will be mid-run and be like, I want this to be over so bad. I just want to be done. And that shows me that it, it, like it's a great exercise. You know what I mean? When you just like mm-hmm. don't want to be doing it, if, if that makes sense. Like as much mm-hmm. as I love it, I'm like this. Is, it's just hard. And so it's conti- like the gym can be. Sometimes I leave the gym and I'm like, oh, that like I was there for an hour and I don't really feel like pushed myself at all or even broke a sweat. We're running. I'm like, so I'm like that's why I like running. I like running when you jog by a jogger and it's like a little part of the seawall. It's like no one else is around and you give each other a little wave or a smile. Great mm-hmm. feeling. Mm-hmm. When you wake up and get your run done right to start off your day and the rest of the day, you're just on a high because, yeah, got my run done. And like you have that mentality and that runner's high. Amazing. And also just I love running. Like obviously Vancouver is beautiful. But even when I travel, like I've ran in Hawaii and in Australia and Tokyo in a park. You know what I mean? All those parts of like running in these different cities and just kind of like having that moment of like, Oh my God, like I'm in Brisbane right now. And how cool is this boardwalk? And I'm just like jogging and hopefully not getting lost because I don't know the area. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's uh, many reasons why I love running. Oh, I, I would completely agree. I, I Running for me is such a great discovery tool for mm-hmm. like just going through new cities, new towns, whatever, new areas. And what I often do, and it's because it's a good excuse for me, is I will... Uh, stop and take photos like it's a perfect excuse for me to be like oh this is great and then i stop and then i keep running again Mm. nice um wow is walking exercise because if you do enough if you do a lot of it yeah because it's up there for me i do a lot of walking sometimes like four or five miles a day um i see on your strava yeah Yeah. ryan and (laughs) you run to each other on strava and i run too um yeah yeah, walking honestly has just been a source of sanity for me because like 
just on the job hunt. Days are long, <laughs> like and just looking for, you know, looking for work, waiting for interviews, waiting for emails back, any of that stuff. Um, yeah, I just find I have a lot. And of you lift and... some huge amounts of emotional weight as of late. Dave. Uh, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> and walks really do help like center that. And it's the same, very similar things to what you both were saying about running is it helps me feel grounded in the area that I'm living at the time. Um, yeah, disperses energy. But yeah, I also do love running. And somewhat recently, like I I'm a little off the loop because I forgot my running shoes, but um, I've been trying to do sprints at the end of a run. And I'm just like, oh, my God, like it had been so long since I sprinted, <laughs> like I would jog and I'm like, OK, I think the equipment is all going to work. I don't think I'm going to hurt myself sprinting. Um, but yeah, it really like, it's what you said, Ryan, of like knowing that you really, really pushed yourself until you couldn't do anymore is like mm -hmm. so satisfying. Yeah. Wow. The other, the other day I was at the end of my run, but there's like two different endings I can do. One of them is like where I walk a little bit more home and the other one's where I don't have as much as a walk. And in my head, I was, gonna, I was just really hot and I was tired and I'm like, I'm going to end a little early today. And then in my head, I'm like, because I had had a, a few auditions last week and I'm like, if you run the next three blocks, you're going to book one of those commercials. <laughs> so like that... I, I ended up running the next three blocks, did not book one of the commercials yet, <laughs> but who knows? Uh, but it was just like that mental thing, you know, where I had to like trick myself to go do those last three blocks just to kind of yeah, do it. I did that all the time in running. It is such a good tactic yeah. because it becomes these small achievable goals, especially like, I don't know if you do this, Ryan, but um, the longest I did was a half marathon and I had to do a shit ton of training for that one. And my thing was, is that I'd always tell, I would like, I would literally go into these conversations with my own body. Whereas like, you just got to get to Siwash Rock. Once mm -hmm. you're there, we're good. And then it was like, now you just got to get around this next bend. Now you just got to get this. And I'd always have these small little short-term goals and it kept me going, going, going. That's great. Yeah, yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Mm, get to this That's next great. hot man. And then <laughs> <laughs> I just want one more person to wave at me. <laughs> Please. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, that's so lovely. Do we have any other thoughts? related to exercise that felt pretty like that was like a good just like intro <laughs> to how we relate to exercise what do you think yeah mm. feel good cool um and i guess uh and like i haven't been back in a gym but there is there is a small sick part of me that does enjoy using like a squat machine i'm not good with squatting like free weights or dumbbells but like yeah, there is a part of me that's just like, I'm going to push this David? thing. Why, <laughs> David? Why do you have a sick Cause interest I, in Because I want a big butt. Machine. I'll say it. <laughs> ah, there we <laughs> and go. And I've just never had a big butt. <laughs> you get that big butt. You get it. <laughs> Think he wants that shelf. He wants to be able to put stuff on his <laughs> yeah. mantle. I, uh, I wish. I wish I had a high, mm -hmm. tight ass. All right. We're going <laughs> to transition to... The fun of the show, even though it's all been fun. Today, we're going to play Two Truths and a Lie with our special guest, Ryan oh, Steele. Yes. So the way this game works is basically in the title. Each of us have two truths and one lie, and it's up to the other two guests to figure out which one the lie is. So I'm going to put Robert in the hot seat first. Uh, Robert, what are your statements? Okay. Um... Okay, so I, <clears throat> my three things are as follows. I sang romantic songs to my high school teacher. I've been known, or not been known, I've been to a town called Fingering Ho, and I have five cavities in total. Uh, I'm not going to make an innuendo about the cavities. Um, let's see, mm -hmm. Robert, uh... What song did I you just sing? Got that. <laughs> <laughs> what song did you sing to the high school person? I used to sing uh, Mrs. Robinson. To you said a high school teacher? Yes. Okay. It's awkward. High school teacher. And do you know Mrs. Robinson, the like classic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think Simon Garfunkel? Yeah. Uh, Ryan, do you have any questions? <laughs> um, no, I think I know I think I know the answer. <laughs> Um, and then with the cavities, uh, so are these just untreated? No, like they were, they were, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. that shit, I'm not paying for it. 
They've yeah. been treated. Just a big They're, smelly yeah, mouth. They've been treated. <laughs> 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 like one of those old dogs with the rotting teeth. Ugh. Um, okay. Yeah, I got my guess as well. So my guess is that you did not romance a high school teacher. What about you, Ryan? My guess is that he does not have five cavities. Okay. What's the reveal? The reveal is this. Ryan Steele is correct. <gasps> I have zero cavities. I have one filling that was actually given to me by a doctor or dentist because she said she's like, it was the back of my back tooth on the like thing on the lower side or upper side. She's like, there was this like basically the formation of my tooth was such that she's like, you're not going to be able to ever like um, brush there properly. So she's like, I'm just going to fill it in to smooth it out. So I've never actually had a cavity in my life. I've been lucky. Oh, wow. I have been to a town called Fingering Ho in, <laughs> in, in England. And I'm going to go to like a series of ridiculously named English towns. They're so great. There's a place called Soggy Bottom. Oh, I want to go there. Oh, my um, God. <laughs> Why did you I sing did, to your teacher? I sang. So I sang um, uh, Mrs. Robinson because her name was that. And I just she was my English mm. lit teacher. And I, I loved her. She like, I was such a keener. I loved the class. And I was always like raising my hand because they would do like, you knew the like reading section. You'd read like a section out of Shakespeare or something. And they'd be always like, can we get a volunteer to read the next segment? And I'd always be like me. And I'd be like, ooh, ooh, ooh. She's like, anyone other than Robert? <laughs> and I was always just like the overly eager person. And then I would like, I knew I bugged her. So I'd bug her further. Maybe like, like, here's to you, Mrs. Robert. And she's always like, oh, Robert. And then one day she was like, um, Robert, do you know what that song's about? And I'm like, no, I don't know. She's like, it's about a younger man having an affair with an older woman. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh, God. And it's, it stopped singing it from ever <laughs> since then. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. it wasn't, yeah, you weren't necessarily trying to romance this teacher. No, no, no. I just sang it. Yeah, the, the connotation became that. <laughs> wow. Um, Ryan, would you like to go next? Yes. Um, I feel like a lot of these are things I've put on social media before. So you might find, you might know the answer right away, but you know what? Here we go. Okay. My three things. I have a fake testicle. I came in second place on the Amazing Race Canada. I have never been fired from a job. Um, Which testicle, left or right? Left. 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 About that. Left. Well, my, about that. my left or your left? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, left you, is left the fake from one? your perspective. My yeah. left. My left is yeah. fake. Okay. Your left. Um, with the never been fired from a job. Have you ever been close? Have you ever been like brought into the office for a serious talk? Uh, no, I never. I mean, when I worked at Red Robin, I think I got in trouble because I was rolling my sleeves. <laughs> Like I'm part of the office because you weren't allowed to roll your sleeves, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm showing my off my pipes. I am like, <laughs> I I'm ro- and I work at Red Robin. I'm like, let me do what I want. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, no, I've never been sat down with anything serious. Okay, no. is there a job you should have been fired from? Uh, no, but when I worked at Bridges, it's the only job where like I was summer. Not help is the right word, but I was like summer staff. And usually when you're summer staff at Bridges, you either go on to get asked to work there in the fall or you're welcome back next summer. And I was excited to work there the next summer and they like totally lied to me. And so they lost, they'd already staffed everybody and they lost my contact information so they couldn't reach out to me, blah, blah, blah. So that's as close as I've got. That was pretty much them saying, we don't want you to work here because I'm not really good with like the bottles of wine service and like and not the bridges is that fancy but like i'm a i'm a nightclub but like pub kind of guy i yeah i can't do the fine dining thing okay mm. all right i have my guess um i think okay, well oh go yeah. ahead robert go go no no go i i think I, I have it too okay i think that you have never been fired i mean i think that you have been fired i think that's a lie what about you robert i agree i think he's also been fired I have never been fired from a job okay. uh, oh, because I didn't come in second on Amazing Race. I came in third, bitches. Because <laughs> <laughs> I knew I you'd thought you on did it. come in second, <sighs> and you know what? Oh, David, you started going into the answer mode, and I literally was going to say, "Well, who was third place then?" Oh. Do, do you do you know who was? I guess fourth then. Uh yeah, Suki and Jinder. Okay. <sighs> Well, all right, Ryan got us. Well done. Um, got you. 
All right. I watch a lot of Raquel, Kelly and Ryan every morning, like Regis, the old Regis. Now it's Kelly and Ryan Seacrest. And they play this every day, but they do one truth and one lie. And sometimes, usually the lie is just an actual fact, but they just change a small thing about the fact to make it a lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How old were you? Did you, how old were you when you had to get the full ball? I, I was 25, I believe. I didn't have to was get it? it. I was just, I had testicular cancer when I was 19. They removed my testicle for like six years. I was one nut Ryan. That's what they called me. Just joking. Um, <laughs> and then I had moved downtown and I had this new doctor. And one day I was just there for like a checkup or, you know, whatever, checking out what STD I had that week. And he was hey, like, oh. um, uh, just so you know, you can get a prosthetic for free. And I was like, oh, I never even thought about for that. Free. And, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I never, I don't really, it's not that big of a deal to me, but if it's free and it's, it was a pretty minor surgery, you know, like they do put you under, but, um, it was very quick and you know, you're in and out, um, St. Paul's and yeah, it was, and it just kind of like helps fill everything out a little bit better. Yeah. 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 God bless public health systems, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For Canada. real. Have I talked about Robert? Do you remember if I've talked about testicular torsion on the podcast? No, I don't think I, don't I have. Think have. Um, yeah, I had testicular torsion and I, I could have lost a, a nut as well if they didn't catch it earlier. Do you know what that is? Uh, is it basically it's kind of twisted within the scrotum? Yeah, yeah, basically. So what it twists you? and I was uh, in 2008, I was 15. So um, yeah, yeah, basically a nut twisted and like because of the way the, the blood flow works, it restricts blood flow to the testy and then like. You can lose it. It can die within 24 hours. It just goes, hell. David, and, you were literally blue balling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. The most extreme. I was red balling. I was black you balling. Were, uh, <laughs> you, oh, <laughs> blue and black. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, Poor thing. But yeah. Well, I'm glad you pulled through uh, with the cancer. Was that like a tough treatment? Have you talked about this publicly? A lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Whenever yeah. people okay. ask me how, I how, how I got on Amazing Race, they're like, how do you get on Amazing Race? I'm like, I had cancer. <laughs> you can see, yeah. To get on a reality show, a lot of times you just need a good backstory. And mm. that's not really why I got on. But it, it did, <laughs> I'm sure. I, it, it did help. And like, sure enough, one of the episodes, they do do a, a backstory on it. Um, oh my yeah. gosh. You, you could throw a lot at that application. I'm queer. I had cancer. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I broke my leg just for the occasion, so I'm disabled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, wow. Yeah, no, it was, yeah, I had chemo and everything. It was, it was, uh, it was pretty intense, but yeah. it, uh, made me who I am today, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Well done. And we don't want anything else. Um, oh. so my statements are, I have survived a car crash. I have been pantsed, including underwear. Mm. And I hate old people. I already have my answer. I already know which one this is. Okay. No follow-up <laughs> questions. Uh, my Why initial... do you hate old people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate old people because I think they should just. I think they should just fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> You've been pants, including underwear. What was the first one? Um, a car. You survived a car crash. Right. The first one was surviving a car crash. Well, how intense? How intense was it? Um, it was kind of like a T-bone, but like L-bone. Uh, so we were backing out of a parking spot and a car was whipping around the corner and like hit the bumper of the car that I was in. Um, yeah. and I was in a seat without a seatbelt and I actually like flew through the car window, like broke the glass. Um, and yeah, traveled like six feet or something, landed in a pile of slush and then survived. Do you have a scar? No scar. I was too young. Uh, but yeah, I think there was some sort of like sprain or like bones broken in my legs or something. Uh, you fell in slush? Yeah, in the winter. What slush? Like snow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, snow oh, that okay. had been piled up. Are in you the that lot. much of a Vancouverite that you don't know what slush is? <laughs> what is slush? Yeah, actually, we don't get it. So it's here once a year and everyone's like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <gasps> um yeah. okay david how many people witnessed the pantsing uh this was mm -hmm. in middle school it was a pretty crowded uh middle school bathroom there were maybe like 10 or 15 people and i just got pants and like i felt it was the in the bathroom yeah 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 there was like a locker room kind of area um this was in a christian middle school 
Just to oh like God, no wonder you turned out gay and have yeah. some sort of like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surrounded by boys and my pants are down. Very formative experience. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, I felt the underwear come down and I was like, oh, wah! And then immediately like went to grab it. So I don't know if anybody saw anything. No one seemed to like point. He also grabbed his penis. pants. Hey, oh. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wild. <laughs> your pants fall down, you grab your dick, and then you pull the pants. Like, oh my, oh my god. Yeah, you want to support it? Yeah, I think I know. The, I think I know the answer. Me okay, too. go ahead, uh, Ryan. Uh, the lie is that you hate old people. Okay. Robert, oh yeah. What is your guess? Oh yeah, it's the old people thing. It's totally the even, old people I thing. I couldn't even convincingly lie about it. Uh, no. Yeah. This is just uh, fuck like off. David. Is, yeah, <laughs> David is too kind of an individual to hate old people for like with no reasoning behind it. They should just fuck off. Uh, <laughs> so transparent. I feel so exposed. All right. Uh, I, I like also, when you're pantsed. Yeah. I also was pantsed uh, mm-hmm. full under, and I also survived a decent car accident. Whoa. Oh, gosh. Wow. You guys have so much in common. Where were you? Were you in high school? With the pants, when, the pantsing, yeah, the pants. yeah, pantsing. Was it, was in during, high school. it was during the car crash. <laughs> was, oh god! It was what? It was like I don't think it was in school. I think like I had this little crowd that I hung out with. There was probably like yeah. twelve of us, and we were like watching Ricky Lake after high school at someone's house, and someone just went. I was wearing shorts, I think, and they just went whoosh and in front yeah. of everybody. And I was like, oh, thanks. Yeah. Like, can I give me a second to grow first? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. um, thanks for exposing uh, my cancer penis. And it's like, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, and you were probably, you know, you grew up during the 90s. You probably made the mistake of buying, like, tearaways that everyone else did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, we, we all did it. And the, the fucking those things were ripped off all the time. This is true. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking for it. Yeah, you are. You really are. Begging. That's literally the only piece of clothing I can say where you're asking for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Robert, have you ever been pantsed? No. I mean, yes, but well, I've never, it's always been pants, but no underwear. Yeah, yeah. Booking hmm. yeah. my flight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put it, it in your lurking, calendars. Lurking around the corner. Be February 25th. <laughs> that mm-hmm. is so lovely. We're already at the end of today's episode. So, yeah. Ryan, uh, did you have any takeaway from our chat today? I loved it. It was so good to, to see you guys and uh, and talk to you guys. And it's funny because like fitness is just such a part of my life, but I actually don't talk about it that much. So it was kind of nice to talk to other people about, uh, yeah, just what we get out of it and why we do it. Hell yeah. How about you, Robert? Yeah, it was actually very refreshing to talk to uh, other people who I think have enough exposure to it and are woke enough, who have kind of aged enough to re- to to have a similar approach, which I think is kind of like validating and like reaffirming to myself to be like, it ultimately should be about having a healthy relationship Mm -hmm. with uh, your exercise and your food and your life. Because if you're just, otherwise you're just not enjoying life. And like three people are doing comedy in that. And it's, it's nice to hear that, you know, it's about ultimately enjoyment and that. So that's good. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's a whole other topic of just like, are healthy people doing comedy or is it mostly unhealthy Ooh. people? Deep question. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's kind of my takeaway as well. It's nice to talk about balance as opposed to like extreme approaches to exercize and stuff. So, yeah. Well, just you. don't talk to us about yeah. men then. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am not that's balanced dumb. in my approach to men. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, our special guest, Ryan, again, can be followed at Ryan and Amy Show on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, and did I have anything else? Oh, yeah. Look up the Ryan and Amy Show. There's a lot of their sketches on YouTube, and they are hilarious. Ryan also mm-hmm. does solo stuff on his Instagram. His TV ratings review are, like, they're so <laughs> addicting. Like, I'll just, like, sit there. I'll, like, wait. So that I can sit there and then watch a whole bunch of them for like a half hour, like 40 oh, minutes. Oh, stop. <laughs> so um, that's all I'll say. Enough flattery. Thank you so much for listening to Tissues of the Day. You can follow me, David, at BitButton on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow Robert at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram. You can follow and subscribe to the BitButton YouTube channel. Make sure to turn on notifications. If you really love the show, you can support it on patreon.com slash BitButton. Stay wet, internet. Dewey! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>